Welcome to the Hypothesis Testing on Proportions, uh, the R video tutorial that's part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. All right, so we're going to jump on here, do a quick review of hypothesis testing that is covered in previous videos, but in case you jumped over those, uh, this is the basic idea. Here I'm just going to start off with the standard one, which has mu for a mean, uh, but it could be a proportion, and we'll look at our example next. All right, suppose we have this hypothesis that uh, we have a null and an alternative. We have one-sided here. We're looking specifically to see if mu is greater than mu naught. Our significant level is alpha, and this is the probability of a type 1 error. I like to think of it as the proportion of the time you are willing to be wrong uh, in a problem like this in the type 1 sense. If you don't know what the type 1 sense is, uh, run back and look at your notes. Uh, our test statistic is where we design our experiment and determine how we'll analyze it and use a test statistic T star. We're going to develop a decision rule, and the decision rule is if the p-value is less than alpha, then we'll reject H0 in favor of HA, and our inequality for our p-value is stolen from our alternative. Okay, so you do all of those steps before you ever collect any data. The fifth step is you actually conduct the experiment and analyze it like you said you were going to do in the first four steps. And then the goal here is to obtain a p-value. Then the decision is apply the rule to either reject H0 or fail to reject and then write a conclusion in terms of the context of the research question. All right, so we're going to pop on here and what we're going to do is we're going to look at a quick example. Let's suppose we are interested in a majority, whether we have a majority or not. So our null hypothesis is P is less than P0, which is equal to a half because a half is where a majority would be. Uh, as soon as we're above a half, we have a majority. So the null hypothesis is we don't have a majority. The alternative is P is greater than P naught, which is a half. So uh, that's a majority. The significance level I've chosen is 0 0.032. Doesn't have to be 0 0.05, and actually I don't like 0 0.05, uh, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, the test statistic that we're going to use is we are going to, for our experiment, draw a uh, simple random sample of 1,000 from the population, uh, determine the number who agree with us, and then calculate the Z statistic. And notice it doesn't depend, the distribution does not depend on the value of P0 or P hat. Uh, we have, here's our decision rule, if the p-value is equal to uh, the probability z is greater than little z, so this is a one-sided test, upper-tailed test, we're going to reject H0 in favor of HA. We're going to use R to actually simulate this because we actually want to see what's the sampling distribution of Z and make sure that it actually looks normal. Uh, and then we're going to apply our decision rule and state a conclusion. We're really not going to state a conclusion because we don't really have a context here. Uh, what I'm trying to show you is, is how we can go through this, uh, the mechanics of this, and use simulation to help us. All right, so let's jump over to R. Okay, now that we've jumped over to R, let's start programming up our to hypothesis test here. So if you remember, our null hypothesis was 0 0.5 was the value that's associated with it, and we said that our sample size was going to be 1,000. And what we want to do first is just see via simulation what the sampling distribution of Z looks like. Uh, we say that it's approximately normal, but how normal is it? So, so let's do this first, uh, and then we can get a sense of how to work this to come up with a p-value via simulation, and then we'll use come up with a p-value using the function that already exists in R. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, suppose x1 uh, is our data that we're going to have, so and it's going to come from a binomial distribution. And how many of them are we going to take? We're going to take n1 of them. There's a thousand people that we're going to ask. Ask them once, and we're going to be, they're going to have a probability of either way, like a coin flip of saying yes or no. That's what we're assuming uh, initially if we're trying to show that we would have a majority. So if I just run this, you can get a sense of what I'm looking at here. So x1, if you look over here, you can just see that it's ones and zeros, ones and zeros. So if I want to get the proportion of this, I would just take the mean. So here I'm just going to do x mean uh, is equal to the mean of uh, x1. And actually, I'm going to change the name of this from x mean because the x mean in this case is actually p hat which is what we were going to be interested in anyway in our formula. Our formula has p hat in it. So if I run this, you can see p hat here for the sample that I pulled is 0 0.49. 
Now, what I want to do is now calculate Z for this. And we have everything we need. So I'm going to put in here Z1 is, uh, let's see, got to use parentheses. It's P hat, if you remember the formula, minus P0 divided by the square root of P0 times 1 minus P0 divided by N1. So this is our, our distribution. Uh, now we're going to do this via simulation, or I mean this is our test statistic. We're going to do this via simulation, so we need to make sure that when we do this, we record the answers. So we're going to need a container. So I'm going to do a container. Uh, let's call this Z out one, and it's going to be a container full of zeros. So we're going to repeat zero, and I'm going to do it, let's say, 10,000 times, because this is how long I'm going to run the simulation. Okay. And the next thing I'm going to do is put my for loop on here for i in 1, and it's going to go all the way to 10,000. That's how many times I want to do this. I know it seems ridiculous, but we want to get a good picture of what's going on. Okay. Uh, then we have z out 1 is, uh, and then we're going to do the if position. So we're going to store it in the ith position, z1. So we can see what that's going to be. We're going to close off our curly brace to finalize our for loop. Now, if you don't do the curly brace, uh, things are going to go bad for you. Uh, then we're going to do hist, and we're going to do z out 1, which should create a histogram for us. And then we're going to add one thing to this. We're going to do frequency uh, equals false. And this will give us a different picture than we've had before. So when you watch the other video where we do these, uh, you'll notice this is a bit different. So the color here, I'm going to make it light blue. And let's see what we get when we run this 10,000 times. If I haven't made any mistakes, we can see what we'll get. And we run it. It takes a second. And notice this does look kind of like a normal distribution. Kind of like it. It's symmetric. It seems to be centered around zero. Remember, it's a normal zero one is what we're after. Uh, so let's actually lay a normal distribution on top of this thing to see what it looks like. And we can do that using uh, our density functions that already exist in R. So I'm going to do lines. I'm going to do uh, a sequence uh, from, let's say, uh, minus 6 to 6. I'm going to go by 0 0.01. Okay, and this is going to give me the sequence uh, for my x axis. And I'm going to copy this because I want to actually plug this into my function d norm, okay, which is going to give me the density. So I'm going to do d norm, actually move it down here. d norm is going to be our y. Uh, we're going to plug in these values, and the mean is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. And I'm going to put it in here that the color is going to be red. So if I run this now, I'm just going to run it all again, we can see what we obtain. And you can see that, sure enough, this sampling distribution of Z, so this is how Z varies uh, across all possible, well, not all possible, 10,000 possible samples of what we could actually see in real life, does seem to follow the normal distribution quite well. And that's uh, what R is going to base itself on. And most of the tests you've seen so far, you say, well, it's approximately normal. And here you can actually see that it's approximately normal. So what we're going to do now is try to get an, uh, a p-value based off simulation. And that's really, really easy here. So I'm going to do p-val1. Uh, all I have to do is take all of the values bigger than the one, the z value I see. So, so I need to actually see some data. This is what I would see if the null hypothesis is true. So let's suppose we collect some data now and we see uh, x equal to or the number of successes 562 out of 10 out of a thousand people. 562 say yay. Is that enough to say it's a majority? Well, we're going to calculate z again, so I'm going to copy, uh, copy this here, and I'm going to need to change a few things to make this work, but the only thing I really need to change is p hat here, okay? So I'm going to just need to make it 562, which is what I saw, out of 1,000, that's my proportion p hat, that I actually see in the data. The rest of this is fine. Uh, because this is what it is under the null hypothesis. And I can see that Z1 now has the value 3.92. Okay? So we can actually plot that as well. So we can do AB line. 
uh, vertical line at Z1, and I'm going to make the color equals, oh, uh, I don't know, how about orange? Just because I don't use orange very much. So we'll do orange, and if I run this onto our picture, you can see that there aren't many samples out here. Uh, which means that's unlikely, right? This is a likely values we would see of Z. This is the value we saw from our data. So if the null hypothesis is true, these are the likely values. This one's an unlikely value. And we can actually calculate its p-value uh, using the simulation data. So I, all I'm going to do is I'm going to sum up the uh, Z out uh, that are greater than uh, Z1. So all I'm going to do is add up the ones that are bigger than that. So uh, I would need to find those, and in this case, I'm pretty sure that it's zero. So we can actually just calculate this uh, quickly. So we can say the Z out one, where um, here Z out one is greater than our and I probably should have made this Z1A here, just so it's slightly different than the Z1 we had above, is greater than Z1A. And if I run just this bit here, I can see that there's none of them. It's numeric zero. There are actually no observations in there. So our p-value is going to be essentially zero. Okay, so this shows you that we should get a p-value that's essentially zero from this if we use simulation. We can use the R function in here that uses the normal theory. So it doesn't do simulation. It just goes directly, looks at the normal distribution, and calculates the p-value. So let's use the uh, built-in R function. Okay, and it's prop.test really easy to use you put in the number of successes 562 and the number of times you looked uh, which was a thousand and if I run this I get a p-value out of here that is 0 0.00010004 so it's really small number uh, and it's much smaller than our actual number that we had of 0. 0362, which was my significance level. So in this case, we actually would reject H0 based off normal theory. Uh, we would also reject it just based off simulation theory as well. By looking at these simulations, this value is really unusual out here. Um, so uh, the probability is very small that we would see this kind of data uh, if the null hypothesis is true. So we would either assume that we have freak data or that the null hypothesis is false. And so we're going to say, well, if I did my experiment right, then it must be that the null hypothesis is false, and that's why we reject it. All right, so we're going to jump on to the next video where we'll do the same sort of thing with a mean so you can see how that works and be convinced that, that all of the stuff that we've been telling you in all these statistics classes actually works. And we're going to look at it via simulation uh, basically because I'm trying to show you how to program. And if we don't use programming, you really won't learn how to do it. Uh, but I will make a video that has a summary of how to do all of these steps and these tests later. All right, move on to the next video.